All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm working a, looks like a Williams. This is a Duracrone. I don't even know what the extension, it's a half inch, 10 inch long. And then a right little breaker bar. And I've never taken these apart, but it looks like you can take this apart. This one's solid. It won't, it's, it won't go anywhere. So I need to uh, break it loose and see what I can do here. Probably what I need to do is just put this in the vise. Okay, let's go to the vise. Be the next step. Alright. Let's see if I can drive this one out. Oh yeah, they're coming out. Check that out. I didn't know they'd come apart, but I guess some of them do. I'm learning something. want to get my oh it's sticky that's it my punch deadhead I think my punch is deadheading all right what's wrong with this picture here thought there was a ball bearing or something in there or a spring maybe let me squirt Hang on, little WD here. You know why it doesn't want to come out? It's like I'm hitting. I'm hitting hard on something. Hitting hard on something. Hang on a second. Let's try this. Oh, there, it just worked it out. Let's see what we got in here. got to be a clip or something. There it is. There's a spring right there. Sorry. My thumb's in the way. Fingers are in the way. There's a clip right there. Thought there'd be a spring or something under there. So... Looks like the spring only goes on one side. This side. Huh, learned something today. Definitely gonna have to clean that out real good. All right, let me put this down, go to the other one. All right, let's see what we got here. This one, man, this one's rusted. I wonder if I should maybe soak this one or work it a little bit. Hang on a sec. It's not stuck anymore, but it's still pretty stiff. I'll tell you what, see if I can knock that pin out. Oops! Yeah! I really need like a third hand.
Try to move it both directions. It's moving now. Man, it's tight. came out near the end came out really quick there's a spring on that one right there look at the rust pack down in there look at that all right, I got to keep these separate now to make sure I don't screw up. Let me go to the table, be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, they are separate sizes, so I'm not worried getting confused. Uh, you know, and these tools aren't, uh, most people don't use breaker bars like they used to. Uh, most people don't work on their vehicles and power equipment like they used to but it's getting to the point now where you can't afford to buy new you have to repair so i just want to show you that you can take these apart some you can i i, I bet there's others out there you can't but man look at the, i want to show look at the rust on that Hmm. Let's see if I got a little Dremel hooked up here. bad this one I may have to sit there with a pick and maybe a little piece of fine steel wool maybe let's uh, where's my little screwdriver hang on a second I've moved things around again Where's this one It's hard to do. Maybe I can squeeze it in there. I might have to put some steel wool on a drill bit and, and just do it that way. I 
there. There's a lot of rust right down in there. That's going to be a kicker to get. That's going to be hard to do right there. I'm going to have to see what kind of Dremel parts I got. Alright, be right back. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and just run all this over the wire wheel real quick. And this one's rusted pretty good. See what we got. wheel got all the rust off actually came off really well this was used someone beat on it with a hammer you can see on the knurling so B 40 a Williams cleaned up pretty good got all that cleaned up I used uh, I got a little brass wheel or brass brush that I used to clean that up inside there this cleaned up really good this Duracrome this half inch 10 inch long uh, extension 665 I believe is the number on it Duracrome it turned out nice and all I did on this was uh, run it over the fiber wheel uh, I wasn't I didn't show running over the fiber wheel but man that turned out great I may not even polish that this is the wire wheel and a little bit of the fiber wheel and same thing I cleaned the holes out with this uh, little brush this will turn out to be a nice little one uh, the only thing I don't like is I don't like the handle I don't like this little uh, rubber I don't know it's grip I don't like that part of it rest of it I cleaned these I polished on the fiber wheel a little bit didn't take long the detent's not stuck. It works good. Same way with this one. This one was rusted more. And that's the best I can do. I don't have any other way of really working this part out. I don't have anything. I thought about using a Dremel with one of those little uh, grinding wheels on it, but I don't want to damage the the setting where the spring goes in and the same thing with the spring the little keepers these little spring clips I just use a little Dremel tool wire wheel on the Dremel and cleaned it the best I could and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on them and sink see I clean these up now I'm just gonna I guess throw them on polish a little bit before I put a bit together not bad for like 40 cents a piece. I got a, like a dollar twenty in these. 
I think it'll turn out nice. It'll be good to use tools. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put these little things together. I'll tell you what, before we do that, throw a coat of wax on them. How about that? I use this mother's wax, it's a cleaner wax. One of the main reasons I use this cleaner wax is that the polishing compound will stay on. It'll, uh, it'll get in cracks and crevices. Sometimes I'll clean them with carburetor cleaner before I put them together, but I'm not, see the little black that comes off? I'm not really worried about it. These are just good used tools. I didn't give it a good, I didn't give it the best polish job, but I'm not really worried about it. I don't care. Because they're just good old tools. Nothing super fancy. I mean, think about it, I only got 40 cents in these things, if that much. Uh, 40 cents a piece, something like that. They cleaned up good. And this one, the chrome plating on the right, was really nice. I mean, it turned out really good. The plating on the, on this uh, Duracrome is pretty good. Except I didn't spend a lot of time polishing. I, I could have spent more time on this and made it even look better. This one, the chrome plating is is a different. I don't know. On the Williams, it's a little different. I don't know what. I know there's differences in metal and the plating, and then of course I'm sure there's a difference in age and how they're abused and that too. But anyways, doesn't matter. Good old tools. Now, set this aside. This one is this one. So what I want to do, I probably, before I get hog wild with this, how about if I just put a little bit of grease right where the pivot is see, I don't know if the camera... I can't tell how close the camera gets or anything like that, so sorry, guys. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the inside there. Really, I don't think it needs it. So, if I put the spring clip... This is going to be the trick. I'm wondering if I can bend that spring clip back up a little bit. Ah, come here. Come here. Oh, I got it. And it's sticking in that grease. If I take a pair of needle nose and grab it right there, and take the other pair of needle nose and grab it right there and give it a little twist. Oh, I 
think I gave it too much twist. Hang on, I may have screwed up. Yeah, I might have just screwed up. Let's see if I can get it in there now. Now, which way would be easiest? Hang on a second. Let me get my little hole. Up. Oh yeah. It doesn't flop, see? I didn't want it to, it was not bad, but it's even better now. And what's cool is, see it has a little detent in the bottom of it for a ball bearing. So this was manufactured for others because this one doesn't have a ball bearing down in there. It does not have a ball bearing to hold it in place. So the anvil was designed for other models, which makes sense in production. That's what you want to do. All right, let me grab this. Just twist this a little bit. Hopefully I'll get it less. There's the end for this one. And I don't know, I probably should have oiled this because the grease will make dirt stick more. But I don't use my tools in some areas that would, okay, I'm, I'm looking for the marks on the inside to see where it went. I think it went this way. Anyways, like I said, I'm not gonna be using my tools outside in conditions that would cause it to attract a lot of dirt. Yeah, under a hood of a car or something like that it might be a problem. Oh, now I've got a problem pushing this down in there. Oh, smokes. I wonder if I can push down with a screwdriver. to get it under there. I'm lining up the hole. So I can drive this in there. Hang on, let me go pound on this on the anvil. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Three junk tools, rusty pieces, damaged pieces, and now they don't flop. See? This way it's supposed to move. I need to put a little oil on the detent, I guess. Just a little. It don't need much. I got a socket here somewhere. I did. Where's my socket? Aha. Put a little oil on this one. Might as well drop it oil on this one. I really need to get my pliers over here. There we go. Push down.
think I got three good tools and you can see you can see on this if you look real close you can see spots where I just missed polishing or I didn't do a very good job on it I, I don't care I mean it's not a brand new tool it looks good it's functional cleaned it up it does have some pitting that's where someone scratched it on a grinder and I think they may have done this to mark their tools and scratched it there but the ends in real good shape this side has got a little mushrooming on it I think somebody used it on an impact or used it a uh, hammer blow on it uh, but otherwise it's a good tool it's usable this one man, it turned out really nice like I said the chrome plating on this one as soon as I hit it on the buffer it started buffing and you can see the pitting if you look real close look at the pitting in it but there again to do to take all this down I'd have to put it on the belt sander and I have to take a lot of metal off why it's a good use tool. There's no reason to make an art piece out of a 3 8 what is this, 12 inch long? You know, no, 9 inch long. There's no reason to make it an art piece. It's a tool. That's all it is, a good use tool. Same way with this one. Uh, you can look at the knurling. Someone beat the crap out of this one. They use this one. Though the anvil's not abused. Sometimes you see the anvils and you'll see them either twisted or mangled or beat up. But this one's in good shape. You got some pitting on it, of course. Uh, but B40A Williams, USA. Good quality steel. Same way with the right, USA. And the number on it is a 3438. Good quality. And Duracrome, it's a 66665. You know, good quality tools. I mean, having just, let's say, 40 cents a piece in each one of these, if you find this stuff at flea market, garage sales, pawn shops, wherever you, you go to hunt your tools, pick some of these up. It doesn't hurt to have a few extra. I like breaker bars. I use them. A lot of the guys nowadays use their impacts, but I'm here to tell you there's a couple of bolts on a 5.3 Chevrolet. You're not using an impact on it. If you're trying to take the water pump off, you're using one of these to break a couple of the bolts off loose. And then you can use your impact after that or if you can get it in there or a ratchet. So they have their use. Uh, if you're working on a like a five horse electric motor that's got a oh I'm trying to remember what size pump that is it's a water pump that them things you're not using an impact you're you're using an inch and a quarter bolt uh, and you're you're breaking it loose with a with a, a breaker bar a bigger one than this one that's for sure but they they have their use and it's nice to have one around, even if you only use it one time. That, that's my point about all these old tools. Pick it up. You may not need it now, but a year from now, five years from now, you're going to open that toolbox, you're going to have that tool in there, and it's going to save your bacon. All you need is that one time, and that tool pays for itself. So, you know, my wife doesn't gripe when I buy tools because she knows it either makes you money or saves you money. It's just that simple. You know, you, you, even if you guys that have just hobbies, the right tool makes your day or weekend, whatever, go a lot better. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough gabbing. Y'all give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like it, you do. If you don't, well, tell me what I did wrong, what you don't like. Maybe I'll correct it next time. All right, y'all, have a good day.